Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Franchise Your Success. And we have Coach Dan with us today. How are you doing, Dan? I'm doing wonderfully well. Thank you, Marjorie. <laughs> Amazing. And we know that franchise is the way to go at this point. So let's talk about the seven top benefits of being into franchises. The very first one is that you don't have to come up with every part of the process. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, it's already been created for you. So you just jump in and, and follow that system. However, you're going to want to make sure that it's the right system for you. So if they're, for example, requiring you in that system to do things that maybe you feel really uncomfortable for that you can't get over, you can't get behind, like let's say, for example, uh, your, your, your physical uh, uh, mobility doesn't allow you to do certain things, then you may want to get a franchise that where you don't have to do a lot of physical uh, things in it. And of course, some of them like food services and things you'd be walking around. Although if you're acquiring the franchise, usually it's more of a semi-absentee owned. So you're not there on a day-to-day -day basis and every single day and every single hour that it's open. So you're not buying yourself a job. You are in, you're buying yourself an investment. But still, there's certain things that you want to be aware of that uh, maybe not quite fit what you're, what you're looking for. But the, the, the done for you system is is awesome. But, you know, the other thing that you want to be aware of is, is it too done for you? Is everything done for you? So you're thinking, oh, I, I don't have to do anything. I can just buy this franchise and I'm going to start making money. People will start appearing. My customers appear from nowhere. And there's always going to be some work done to get that set up properly and investigation uh, on how that works. And one of the processes that I always recommend that you look at very carefully when you look at a franchise is the marketing process, mm -hmm. that system. How do you attract clients? How do you attract customers to your franchise? That's often overlooked and just assumed. Now, if you're, if you're looking at a, if you're able to have or even considered for like a Burger King or something like that, it'd be, it's, it's hard to get that. Then you, you don't necessarily need to look in that. I mean, it's pretty automatic. I mean, there's, you know that there's a system, but mm -hmm. If it's a more of an emerging franchise, you need to look at the system. In fact, my son-in-law, I'm grateful to him because he felt like he could come to me and ask me the questions about a particular franchise one day that he was considering acquiring. And so as we went through the whole process and looked into the different things, I said to him, since this is a newer one, you'll want to make sure that you have all the marketing covered. So I would sp ask them specifically, what is their process who do they use for marketing? What agencies have they already set up? Because we're using a lot of digital, of course. Mm -hmm. And what are the results of that marketing? When they spend a dollar, are they getting two, three, four, five dollars back? Um, and, and so that's one of the processes that you really want to gauge in it, pretty much any type of franchise is how the marketing will work to bring in, bring in potential clients. That's right. And the good thing is that all of that is already built into the process that you're going to be yes. following. So that definitely gives you a really good chance for success. Uh, now, another of the benefits that we have seen is that training is already provided. And I feel like as a part of the process, that's already included. Um, tell us a little bit more about the training for a franchise. What does that look like? Well, there's there's two basic types the two well two basic types of training for single unit franchise and that's the in classroom and the uh, hands on franchise uh, training that's in the location. So the thing is about training. Sure, they've already created a system, but you'll want to look at the training section of the franchise disclosure document. There's a section in there that, re that talks about how they are to be trained, how many hours on each topic. You'll want to look at that and make sure you understand what you're being trained for and how much training you're going to get in a particular area. And if you don't feel it's sufficient, you'll want to question the franchisor on that amount of training. Like, for example, if, you, if, it, if the franchise is, is heavy into marketing, you need to bring in clients and you're relying on uh, it's not a destination franchise or a lot of foot traffic and you need to bring in clients or customers from the outside and they only have a half hour of marketing training, that's not enough. So you need to understand how that's going to work and expand on that. So the particular training is that they have it down, they've done it, but they could also be overlooking something. So you, you'll want to make sure that you to look at that. But for the most part, those that have been around a little bit and maybe have 
you know, 10, 15, 20 locations or more up and running, their training is pretty solid because they already have that success rate. Then you can ask the franchisees also, how's the training and how is the support? But that's, that's already in place. So you don't have to create that. One of the biggest challenges in any business to systematize it, to make it scalable, is creating that system. Well, within that system is the training program. And so you've got to be able to uh, build that training program. And that's usually the, one of the hardest things any business owner will do when they're creating it from scratch. It's already done for you in a franchise. So the two different types of training you look at are when you're in the classroom. The, the other key thing is you don't want to go too far ahead of your opening date when you, you consider opening your franchise. So if you, you're going to open five months down the road and you take your training this month, you're going to forget a lot of it. I, you usually wait till closer to the opening and then you're ready to, to, to implement the things you just learned. And then usually the franchisor will also be there to help you open on the hands-on training when your store is open. So that's critical. And then there's a third type of training that belongs to the master franchise or, or your area representative. You got to know how to attract potential partners uh, to, to bring to grant the franchises to. And that's a key element to uh, the master franchise training, as well as managing those franchisees so you can support them and watch their business plans and make suggestions and coach them and mentor them. Because that's the main th function you do as a master franchisee is you become a mentor or a business consultant or coach to help those franchisees in your area succeed. But those are already built. And so you just tap in and and, and move forward, just like a, a high level college course, except it's practical, it's real, and it works because it's proven before. That's true. And it's amazing that they do uh, give you the resources for you to succeed. Because with that training, I feel like it also allows you to have the same quality throughout all the branches that you're gonna open for your franchise. Or if you are a um, master franchiser, you get to help all of the people below you to have the same quality throughout their franchises as well. That's right. amazing. And and it's really cool that it also builds you a network. And that's also another of the benefits that we have, that you have a huge network of other franchisees that you can rely on. Uh, tell us about a time that you uh, found another franchisee's advice really, really helpful for your own franchise. Uh, well, that's, that's a, a solid success principle. If any of you have read the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon oh, yeah. Hill, I mean, you're, you're shaking your head. I think most everybody's <laughs> read that book. Millions and millions of people have read that book. And it's a good foundation for any business uh, at any time, probably not only to read it, but reread it, and as well as other classics like that book. But in that book, one of the success principles he talks about is the power of the mastermind. So, and, and there's a synergy that takes place when you're together with people of like-mindedness, of especially if you're following the same purpose and same goals and, and building the same brand in, in a franchise situation. In a lot of masterminds, they're phenomenal. And so you bring in business owner, they might be running a digital marketing service and another business owner might, might be, uh, be, be running a, uh, a you know, dry cleaner. Another business owner might be running uh, you know, painting business or whatever it is, you bring them in together and they mastermind and they group together. And that's great because you can get ideas from outside of your industry. But what we're finding in the franchise world is you're bringing together the best franchisees and usually they'll have franchisee meetings, a regular, whether it's Zoom or personally, and sometimes a, a national convention. You get to sit with other franchisees that are experiencing the same challenges as you have. And how did you overcome this? And how do you do this? And I've had this situation arise. How, what have you done? You have all that power right there in that room that creates that synergism where if you follow the right advice that you feel good with about in your franchise, you can't help but succeed. So the power of that mastermind group is, is, is already formed within a franchise organization. That's great. And I feel like it truly gives you that support system that you truly need. Because like when you're starting a business, it's kind of scary. But having the knowledge that there's other people around you that also had to go through the same experiences and they have already overcome those challenges, that definitely gives you the hope that your business is going to go just fine. Super great even. Right. Um, also, another of the benefits that we have seen is that you can truly achieve financial freedom and control over your time. Um, and I feel like that's a really big one. How have you seen franchising 
uh, blessing your life with that freedom? Yes. So in the beginning, it might be a little bit more challenging to get it set up. I mean, you know, I'm always talking about the, the challenges in any business because I, 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 I like to I like to see the realism in different things, but also the positivity. I, I, I believe I'm a very positive person, but I like to see. Uh, in, but you have to look at the real reality of things as well. So there there are challenges when you get into a particular business and as you start growing it, uh, those will will come out. But the franchise itself will help you overcome those because people have already experienced those before you and with you. And you're, you're walking side by side with everybody else so that you're able to get to that same destination that other franchisees have already done before you. So you're not blazing the path by yourself. And you're not the pioneer in there out there with the arrows in your back. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the one that is following behind the trails that have already been blazed and and uh, and hopefully a lot of the dangers have already been cleared out ahead of you so that as you get moving forward, you're you're there. That's right. And um, I feel like franchises also allow you to um, extend that education that you just got your training about like becoming a leader to your family and to your kids because later on you can also get them involved into uh, having a franchise. And um, that's also one of the other benefits that we have that you can truly uh, build a legacy and share it into your um, into your family as well. Have you shared your franchise knowledge with your kids? Oh yeah, as much as they want to. But the, you know, <laughs> uh, as I previously mentioned, I've been fortunate to have all five of my children involved with me in our franchise programs, and they've seen how it works. They've seen the the good and the and the challenges and they've learned from, but they've all, it's also brought them a fruitful life. And we've enjoyed a lot of things together. I remember taking all of my children uh, to Costa Rica, for example, Ooh. and we, we took a nice trip down there and enjoyed ourselves. But one of the main reasons going down besides enjoying ourselves was to meet up with my partner down there who is a franchise expert in Costa Rica. And we got to meet him. All of my family got to meet him, be with him, be in the meetings, meet his children. And mm. it just we just hit it off. And it was just a wonderful experience to be together uh, like that. So but the important thing is not only having that time together as a friend, family has been nice. And of course, now many of them have chosen to go other directions and and, and pursuing their dreams in the area they want to be. And that's awesome. I, I, I attribute, uh, I, I compliment them. Hopefully they take with them a couple things that they've learned uh, through the education that they've received through, through franchise operations and the businesses that we have. But now uh, as we move forward and I have franchise ownership, uh, I'm sure they're thinking, okay, maybe I'll get to inherit uh, some of this. And, and uh, I hope they can, but we build that legacy. We build our name. Uh, and we build the opportunity to really do some great things. But the other thing that not only has included that legacy is not just making the profit and not just building the business and, and selling it off and exiting it out at some point. But along the way, we have a chance to give back. We have a chance to serve others. We have a chance to, to pr pr promote worthy causes along the way with the franchise because that only helps to serve the brand name of the franchise with that worthy cause but it also helps to build that legacy because we're serving other people that need our help. That's true. So it's not only a financial legacy. You also have a more um, service-oriented legacy mm -hmm. that you get to build with the community. That's amazing. And uh, it also brings us to um, the other benefit that we have, which is that uh, you mentioned that you can also sell your business, your uh, your franchise later on when you retire. So uh, I feel like having a franchise and having that exit strategy is just amazing because not other businesses would have that available. Yeah, the, the, you have to have it structured and systematized. And so it's been it's scaled properly. And of course, that's what a franchising does. If you haven't done that in your business, it makes it a little more difficult to sell because these the statistics that I've seen show that if you have you build up a business or if you decide you want to buy a business for example a business that you buy for 200 250,000 or less has a 50% success rate mm -hmm. usually because the new owner comes in and thinking oh I can do this but there are usually when you buy an existing business 
there's there's challenges that you have to get over and and you're not it hasn't quite been systematized the right way and the the context of individuals leave with the other owner and they're not they don't stay behind with you some of the customers leave so that's why you have a pretty good failure rate with buying a business where with the franchise you have that 80 to 90 percent success rate mm -hmm. so therefore the franchise in most cases not every case becomes more valuable as an asset to turn around and sell down the road i think we've talked about that before instead of maybe two two and a half times cash flow that you could use a multiple of to turn around and sell that franchise or that business. Franchising is typically higher, sometimes three, three and a half, maybe four times because it has that brand name and that system and it's easy just to jump in and take over it. And then if you want to look at the other type of franchise, the master franchise, where you own the whole territory and you're partner with the franchisor, now the exit strategy becomes even bigger because you've got multiple streams of income typically coming into that French that master franchisee so that that multiple can go between four to nine times and and it can be even higher than just about anything you can imagine for a quick turnaround so that's why i call master franchising the best kept secret in business today not a lot of people know about it but it also provides a very really good return on your investment if you build it correctly Look at that. And uh, I just love it how you're sharing that secret with us. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, and for our last benefit of having, well, it obviously has so many benefits right. being on a franchise. But the last one that we're going to talk about today is that you can truly grow your business at your own speed. And I, how have you seen that with your franchises? Yeah, so I've seen people that really have big dreams and they want to have big goals. They want to make a lot of money and they want to leave that legacy and they want to have the freedom that comes along with business ownership. And that's been one of the easiest ways to do it is through the power of franchising. Um, but there are some people that get into it and see, you know what, I'm just happy with one. I don't I only need to have one because I'm making enough money with my my one franchise. I don't want to have to go out and start working more and and, and hiring more people and, and invest more money to get the one. But the majority of the franchisees out there that are operating those brick and mortar type franchises will own more than one because they see the bigger picture. But the franchise system allows someone to jump in, get a feel for it, get it down. And then when they get into the second one, it's much smoother because they can jump in, boom, boom, boom. They already know it. They understand it. And it makes it easier to, to, to get into that second, third, and fourth franchise. And the financing is even better at that point uh, with those the next few franchises they get. And soon before they know it, I've seen people jump. A guy I worked with, uh, he was working at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And he was able to save up some money, got his first franchise, and 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 then he got his second and third. By the time he was done, he had 12 of them and producing an, an, an excellent income. And, and then he decided, uh, you know what? Maybe I won't sell these. It's producing a nice cash flow. So he hired a general manager to run all 12 of them. And he just walked away, backed away. And it allowed him to still receive that income all the time and let the, the, the uh, general manager take care of all the, the duties for him. That's awesome. And yeah, I, I feel like with a franchise, you can just grow it as big as your dreams are, you know, because like the more you work on your franchise, the, the more you work with your franchisor and learning more about how the process works, you can just make your franchise even bigger. And who knows, maybe you can even become a partner as a master franchisee. So that's amazing. Thank you so much again, Dan. And it's super cool to learn more about franchises and it all the many benefits that it's got. And also knowing that there's a support team ready for you to help you go through all of this process. And as a part of that support team, we also have Coach Dan at your service. So if you have any questions about starting into your franchises, click the link below so we can get you a consultation with Dan and his team. Thank you so much again, Dan. And I'll see you guys on our next episode. Thank you, Marjorie.